Over the years, technology has revolutionized our perspective of the world in various aspects of our lives, starting from our day-to-day -day transportation to our communication and interaction. Have you ever wondered how airports ensure airport traffic control, considering plane landings and takeoffs occurring every few minutes, if not seconds? The radar is one of the technologies used to enable this, along with the use of binoculars by air traffic controllers, who are personnel specially licensed to ensure safe plane landings and takeoffs. Apart from giving the plane's pilot clearance to land, the controller also provides weather condition updates to the pilot and monitors the spacing between landing aircraft using radar technology in the process. We can see objects in the world around us because light, usually from the sun, reflects off them into our eyes. If you want to walk at night, you can shine a torch in front of you to see where you're going. The light beam travels out from the torch, reflects off objects in front of you and bounces it back into your eyes. Radar works in much the same way. It is an object detection system, working just like the torch but using radio waves instead of light. It transmits an intermittent radio wave and for the rest of the time listens out for any reflections of that wave from nearby objects. Through the reflections, it can detect if there is an object nearby and how far away it is. The first practical radar system was produced in 1935 by the British physicist Sir Robert Watson Watt. And by 1939, England had established a chain of radar stations along its south and east coasts to detect aggressors in the air or on the sea. Something interesting in this graph is the acceleration of technology inventions in the 1930s, leading to the Second World War. During the war, airplanes played a major role. Bombing of cities, carried by enemy airplanes, apart from use of ships and submarines, were of a major concern. Battle outcomes depended on the ability to spot and to be able to counter-attack such military craft at an early stage. Radar served as a perfect tool for this purpose. Similarly, radars were used by enemy aircraft to locate hostile anti-aircraft gunfire from planes, ships or land, as well as to identify bombing targets. They were used on ships to navigate at night and in foggy weather conditions to be able to locate enemy ships and aircraft and to direct gunfire. Radar was also used on land to locate enemy artillery and even buried mines, whilst military meteorologists used it to track storms. The radar system proved to be a vital weapon for Britain's triumph over the German aerial warfare, the Luftwaffe, at the Battle of Britain. It successfully alerted Britain's Royal Air Force to approaching enemy bombers. Based on the radar data, the British Women's Auxiliary Air Force plotters and data officers manually plotted positions of the enemy bombers on maps, so as to facilitate offensive and defensive strategic preparations. The radars were also used in Malta during the Sicilian invasion. And most importantly, they were critical in defeating and bringing to an end the German campaign in North Africa. Without radar technology, the outcome of World War II would have been very different, especially for Malta. Radar is still mostly familiar as a military technology, to detect approaching enemy airplanes or missiles. However, as mentioned earlier, it is also put to civilian use for air or sea travel. And on our roads, such as speed guns, 
and in cars for autonomous cruise control. Indeed, radar technology is increasingly leading to smarter cars in detecting nearby objects and braking or steering accordingly. Most of the cars today have a technology called auto braking, which is only possible by having a radar antenna in the front of the vehicle, scanning for other cars or obstructions. When the radar detects an object in front of the car, it automatically leads to a brake so as to avoid a collision. For which one of the following is the radar used? 